Viziart has a new launch. You know I'm all up in there. This is for their spring 2022 collection. They launched so much during the holiday season. They definitely like took a chill pill. But I'm so happy that they came back with what I think to be a quite strong collection. At least I'm excited about it. Oh, they came out with four new petty fours. I love these. I think they're just the cutest things in the world and they really notched up the cuteness level this time. It's pastels for spring, which, you know, pastels are cute, right? But oh, there's little macaroons. So if you don't know, the Petit Fours are inspired by dainty pastry delicacy. I almost walked over today to pick up some macaroons for this video just because, but then I was like, mm, they're kind of expensive anyway, so let me not. But just know in theory, in my heart, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to have macaroons for this review. <laughs> but yeah, we have four new Petit Fours in the line. There already are eight existing shades from previous collections, but now we have some nice fun spring colors. They're gonna be $25 each. Right now they are currently only a Beautylish exclusive. I'm excited that they partnered with Beautylish for this launch because I mean Beautylish shipping is so good. I think what Friday these launched. I ordered it Friday that they launched and they're already here at my house by Monday and I'm all the way across the country from them so customer service from Beautylish is always top notch so I'm excited when they get a little head start with these. I believe they are also coming to the Viziart website. I'm not Sure, if they'll sprinkle into their other retailers, but they normally do. Like, I, I hope Muse Beauty Pro gets this as well. But as of now, you can only get these at Beautylish. So I will have the link down below and I will keep you updated if they launch elsewhere. But these are cute. I just very quickly before I get into each individual palette, in case you don't know, all of these are going to come in a outer carton just like this. Each of these have a 36 month shelf life, which is a lot more than the average eyeshadow palette, which is 12. So they do have a longer lifespan. I think it has something to do with the ingredients and they are all made in the USA. And then as you turn to the back, you'll see the colors, names and ingredients or anything in case you need to take a look. And then the packaging this time, it's the same Petit Four packaging, but I love the Viseart has been doing art for the last few months rather than just the plain packaging. So, oh my gosh, these are just the cutest. And if you don't know how these work, you pull the ribbon and there is no mirror on here. You have a plastic cover and you get four shades which are easily removable so you can mix and match with other palettes. You can put them in a palette. That is Busy Arts claim to fame is how great they are for makeup artists, especially for the functionality here. They're so tiny to begin with. This is really, really great for travel, but I love that you can mix and match these and they're all of that stuff. So they're cute little bite-sized eyeshadow palettes. So the plan here, I'm going to timestamp each of the individual quads. So you'll see the tutorial comparisons with that quad with other quads in the busy art range. And yeah, so we are actually gonna get started to me. Sorry, the most boring one <laughs> is going to be the Pesh. But let's get into it. So as you can see, I have the Pesh. Viziart definitely had to do a neutral one. I will say Viziart does their peaches really well, but this is what the box looks like. Here's a little peek of the colors. And then of course, the cute little macaroons. Online, they just say this is a ripe, juicy bouquet of peach shades. So you definitely have some nice bright peach shades in here. They look fun for the summer. This doesn't look anything really unique. Like I feel like you can get a quad from this at ColourPop. Sorry, Viziart, to compare you to ColourPop. You know I love you. <laughs> but in terms of like that small bite-sized quad, I feel like ColourPop does a lot of peaches too. So let's swatch. So in here we have two shimmers and two mattes. What's great about all of these is they all have shimmers and mattes. So you're able to get a complete look with each quad. So I'm gonna start off with the mattes, okay. Then we'll get into the shimmers. I'm not even gonna try with the French names this time. I'm sorry. <laughs> People always correct me. And I will look it up, you guys. I swear I do, but by the time it goes from my brain to my mouth, I then forget how to pronounce it again. But anyways, we have a nice kind of matte, very light peach. Then this is more of a mid-tone peach. We have more of a shimmery orangey peach. And then this one is a brighter, brighter, truly more red orange. You're not gonna get a lot of depth with this palette. This is definitely gonna stay pretty bright on the eyes, but all swatched beautiful, all is well with those. Now, like I said, Viseart, 
definitely has these colors swimming about in their collection. But I did decide to pull two other petites so that you can kind of see how they compare. So, so this one is from the holiday season. This is Garnet. And I think that these are quite different. The only shade that's similar is probably the matte white, but the one in Pesh is more Pesh-y. <laughs> so these are not the same if you have them. And plus this is like almost all shimmers. So if you have Garnet, you're good. They're different enough. Let's take a look at Chocolat. This is from the first ever launch of Busy Arts Petit Fours. Hesh is definitely more bright and more fun. Honestly, these two together could make one palette and be really pretty. So these are nice to pair together and they aren't too similar. They're like siblings, but they're definitely not twins, if that makes sense. Of the Petit Fours, Pesh is definitely the fun sister, that's for sure. She's much brighter, she's cuter. And like I said, while this is a dupable color story, they did not dupe it within their Pettit's range. Okay, let's get to application. I'm just gonna put a little dot of Hourglass Concealer to even out the eyelid. I'm not wearing this eyeshadow look today because we got three others to test. So no need to put a long-term primer on. My brushes look dirty, I did spot clean them. So we're gonna start off with the lightest shade right here to see how that does against my skin tone. Got a lot of kickback with this, as I do with a lot of Busy Art shadows, so this, this is not out of the norm. Using a Sigma E24. So on my skin tone, I wasn't sure how it was gonna pull, if it was gonna be lighter, if it was gonna pull darker. I feel like this is a peachy version of my exact skin tone, so this did a whole lot of nothing on my skin tone. If you're deeper than me, this is gonna be a good highlight shade, a good all over the lid shade. If you are very fair, you could get away with using this as a transition color, but again, if you're my skin tone, it just turned my skin tone a little peachier. Didn't do too much. <laughs> Which there is a time and a place for a formula like this. That's why I'm just putting it everywhere because it's not doing too much. A shade like this, for me, is really good to blend out harder to blend out the dark shades. Taking an ABH blending brush, let's see how this shade does. Lots of kickback, you guys, so just be aware of that. Since these are lighter shades, I'm not as bothered, but if they were darker, I definitely recommend holding off on the face makeup. Okay, so this one definitely adds more depth on me. She's given me peach. I mean, it's just a great matte peach color. Let's run this along the lower lash line as well. Even though there's a lot of kickback, it's not really applying messy or anything, and it's very smooth. We're not doing anything crazy here. We're going into the brightest shade. Also a bit on the powdery side. I'm using an Esam W21. Let's put her on the outer half of the eyelid. Make sure you tap off that brush since this is a brighter shade. This has a little bit of like lingering glimmers in here. So you can kind of see those specks on the eyelid. It's soft, it's beautiful, it's applying nice. I'm gonna use the very first brush that I used from Sigma. I'm gonna blend out the edges. It's on the outer corner. And then lastly, we're gonna see how this shimmer does. I'm just gonna pop this on the inner half of the eyelid. This is very, very pretty. Now these shimmers are not like super metallic or anything. They're true shimmer, satiny kind of shades, but they're very, very pretty. I'm enjoying the quality of this. I think it's very nice Vizzy Art quality. I just think because of the other options that we have, it's not as exciting to me, but <laughs> it is a great summer palette. So let me put on some liner and lashes on this side so you can kind of get a little bit of a bigger picture, right? So I just did something cute, something simple so that you can get a better idea of this palette. I didn't want to put falsies or anything on because I have more palettes to film with, but this is what it looks like with a little bit of brown eyeliner and mascara. Simple and cute for the summer. You guys might actually really like this for summer vacations coming up, right? I like this palette. I do. Great quality. Let's now hop into the next one. I thought that we would do pastille. Pastille? 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 Pastille. Pastille. I think I said that right. Anyways, so here is what the box looks like. So Papa Blue with browns, as you can see. And I thought, hmm, I feel like we've gotten this from Vizier before. So first, let me show you what we're working with. Here is what the cute palette looks like. I love it. <laughs> oh, I'm obsessed. And then here is what the palette itself looks like. So let's swatch it. We'll start off. We have a nice matte cream and then a really warm shade. Beautiful, so smooth. Then we have a nice shimmery brown bronzy shade and then the blue, hmm, I don't know about this. 
Nice. Okay, so the blue is interesting. It's obviously the star of the show. It's more of a satin as opposed to like a shimmer, which you can see the shade is. So instantly, this reminded me of Lapi or Lapis from The Holiday. This one has like this bronzy shade and a cream shade, and then we have a silver that's different. So I'm going to do a swatch comparison for you. You can see though they are pretty different. The neutral shades in here are much more warm for, for the pastel palette. The lapis is definitely more cold and wintry. Let me do a swatch comparison. So I didn't swatch the silver of the lapis because obviously there's no match, but the mattes are pretty much the exact same, okay? Lapis also doesn't have a matte brown. The one from the holiday season, the shimmery brown, is more metallic, whereas this one is more of a shimmer. Pastille definitely has more warmth, and then Pastille also has a very different blue. This is a more powder blue, whereas this is like a shimmery, deep blue. So same idea, but it's almost like different color families. This one is much more cool, this one is more warm. You probably don't need both, but they are different. Okay, so put a dot on the eyelid. I'm going to use the matte shade to highlight underneath my brow bone. Now this one is brighter than the one in the Pesh palette, so this actually does highlight my brow bone. Alright, using the ABH blending brush, let's see how this brown does. Blending that in, I mean it's blending beautifully. I am expecting all of these shades to work really well because they're done by Viseart and Viseart just doesn't disappoint in that category. I'm gonna put just a little bit in the outer half of my lower lash line. Let's see if we can build up the depth a little. So that's just one layer. And if you add another layer, it does build up in depth, which is really great. That is a characteristic of a high quality eyeshadow that you can get different level of depths by just layering one shade. Okay, I'm interested to try this blue. Seemed a little powdery and messy to me. I'm gonna pop this all over the lid. I don't have a base on it. This is the kind of shade which would thrive with a white base underneath, but I just wanna see it kind of on its own. Huh, actually this is applying a lot better than I thought it would. I thought it would end up being like patchy and powdery, but it's applying super duper smooth. Now there's sh no shimmer to it. It is barely a satin shade. It's like in between a matte and a satin. But you can see it has decent pigmentation, like actually really nice. And it's applied really smooth. I'm using a Refer 14 brush. Let's just blend the blue in. And it's not blending away either. So for shades like this, sometimes they look like they have pigment and then you actually start blending them and then the pigment literally disappears into thin air. This is holding the blue shade really, really well. Okay, so this is a very good quality blue shade. It's not to my taste, you know, I don't love it, but it's working. I'm gonna put a little bit more of the chocolate color in the outer corner. Be careful though, because I did get some blue in the inner corner and that's, it's not that cute looking. Okay, and then I wanna finish off with the shimmery brown. Ooh, that has a lot of pigment to it. That's very, very pretty. I mean, this is not a look that I would normally create, but I really needed to test that blue all over the lid. You can get a very wearable look with this palette if you don't use the blue. So if you just want the brown and then this all over the lid, that would be super pretty for a neutral look if you're into neutrals. And then you can even pop the blue on the lower lash line or the inner corner just to get a fun pop. But like I said, I just wanted to make sure that the blue wasn't patchy or powdery and it's not. It's really great quality. Ooh, I'm impressed. Let me put a little bit more of the shimmery brown right here kind of in the center i don't know was that a bad move not a great move but not a bad move <laughs> okay i don't really love this look but the quality in here is really really nice especially that shimmery brown let me put on some liner and lashes to kind of make it look a little cuter so i tried to do something as you can tell and wing out the blue and put it on the lower lash line it didn't work it's <laughs> This is not a look I would recommend creating with this palette, but anyways. Yeah, I think I like the peach one more just because I'm more likely to grab for it, but the quality on this one is super duper nice. So cool, let's move on. Okay, we're gonna move to my two favorite, the ones that I was excited to play with most. The first one that we have is pistache, so you know it's gonna be nice and pistachio green. <gasps> I'm so excited, okay. First of all, 
beautiful. Oh, I love this green. Spring colors, mm, come get me. Okay, so here's what we're looking at. Love this pastel green. I'm gonna have fun with that. So this is definitely the perfect tone to complement these greens. This matte shade right here. We have one matte in this one. And then we have like a highlight shade with like a slight turn of green gold. This one is more of a green gold shimmer. And then a pistachio matte. Why did I say there was one matte? There's two. <laughs> okay, so that's the shimmer. Stunning. Okay, I love this. This one might be my favorite. Yes, we have the purple one coming up, but I think this one is gonna be stunning. I've been liking greens like these. Now, comparison. Viseart did have a green one launch. This is Peridot. This one came out during the holidays. Here's the difference. So definitely pistache is much more light and pastel-y. This one has some deep tones. The mattes could kind of be close and it's brighter in Peridot. Okay, let me do a side-by-side -side swatch. The mattes are close. So this is Peridot. So we don't have the light shimmer, but the browns are pretty close. The one in pistache has a bit more pink to it. And then this one is a little bit lighter, whereas this has more of a deep green, but they're quite close. And then obviously these two are very different. But I think two of the four shades are kind of close, meaning you probably don't absolutely need pistache if you have Peridot. But I mean, it's not of enough difference to stop me, but a realistic person, I mean, Maybe, depending on the colors that you're gonna use, but that's how those two compare. We're just gonna do this eye first since I have some blue left over on accident. I tried to get it away from the first look, so I just feel like the green needs to go on top of this eye. Taking a big fluffy brush, and then we're going to start off with the matte brown, what we've been doing for every other look. And this is a really great light transition shade for me. Lays down the great base. I really don't wanna do too much with this shade, but she's nice. And this is the perfect tone to complement the pastel greens. So we like that. Just gonna wipe off my brush. And we're gonna go straight into it. I wanna see how this shade is. So I'm gonna start it off in the outer corner. Ooh, yeah. Okay, so it's giving pretty good pigment. Let's just put it all over now. And I'm using a blending brush from Refer to do this, and it's laying down a good amount of pigment without having white base. If you're going for like a truly pastel bright look, use a white base underneath, but I think this looks really pretty on its own. That's stunning, oh my goodness. So fun. This is my favorite so far of the three that I've tried already. Just as this one shade. I think that this shade, so beautiful. I don't know that Viseart even has a color like this in their collection. I could be wrong because they have every color, <laughs> but ooh, I love this green. I'm going to put it down here too, everywhere. If I wasn't reviewing this palette, I'd leave like this. This does not need any more shadows. Yes. Okay, tutorial's sake though, let's go into this green right here, and I'm going to put this Pretty much all over the lid. Very nice, lying very smooth, even with a brush. Has a little bit more gold into it. Perfectly complements the matte pistachio color. Absolutely stunning. Great Viseart shimmer formula. Again, not too metallic, but it still has some gleam to it, and especially over the matte, it's popping out more. And then I'm gonna go into the lighter shade. I wanna start that off in the inner corner and down here. So you can use this as a highlight. It's a little strong to use under the brow. That's quite pretty. It's the same exact texture as the darker green. So these are just very easy to use and if you don't like really metallic, glimmering, shimmering, glittery shades, I think you'll really like the Viseart Shimmer Formula. It's very high quality. It's not the most exciting, but it's super high quality. I cannot deny that. Oh yeah. I'm just gonna put the shimmers all along here because I'm loving this kind of monochromatic scene that we have. This one is my favorite. We'll see what I think of the purples. But this is so beautiful for a simple monochromatic pastel green look. I'm gonna pop on a brown liner, some mascara, and we'll see what we're working with. Okay guys, honestly, I don't know how we can get much better than pistache. It is by far my favorite one. I just, I love the tone so much. The quality is beautiful. You're obviously not getting much depth from any of these. These are like kind of that classic, everyday, bright pastel-y looks. But if one was gonna give it a run for its money, it's gonna be lavender right here. Obviously, I love purples. Purples are my favorite color. 
So, I think you guys think this is gonna be my favorite, but I love the green so much. But let's see. So, uh, it's definitely the prettiest. Look at that. Oh, I love it. Okay, okay. Shut up, Morgan. Oh, this one actually is the one that's gonna give the most depth. I don't know, maybe this one might be my favorite. So we have kind of a more pinky lavender, and then this one is more of a true purpley tone. It has a little bit of blue in there. And then we have a light shimmery, kind of grayish shade, and then the dark purple. So Viseart does purples really well. So I'm excited, that was pretty sheer though. So was that. Ooh, that's nice. Hmm, okay. Of all the swatches though, this one is the most disappointing swatch-wise, but that means nothing. These are purples. Purples kind of normally swatch not very good. This is the only Pettit 4 that is purple. So if you have all the Pettit 4s, this is definitely the most unique, but Viseart has some great purple palettes. So I pulled the Violet Itunzu to see if there are any similarities, and I definitely think that there are. So here's the Violet Itunzu, one of my favorites. This purple right here is super unique. There's not one in there, but I think we can find something close to the rest. Like these two are close, right? These two are close. This and this one's kind of close. I'm gonna do some swatches to show you. Okay, so here's the close swatches that I could find from the Violet Itunzu. The light shades, super similar. The mid-tone purples, super similar. The shimmer is not so much, but in the palette, there's a silver right next to this one. If you mix those together, you could pretty much get this. This shade is the most unique. I picked two colors, so not really that close. But anyways, I think if you have Violet Itunzu and you're not married to the idea of having a cute little quad with purples, I don't think you're gonna need the new lavender palette. You have very, very similar shades in this palette. But again, the calling to this is that it's so tiny and cute. So just keep that in mind, but color-wise, they do exist. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with the lightish, pinkish kind of purple, and I'm gonna put this all over the crease. Just have the concealer if you want this to pop more. You know the deal, put a white base underneath. This is nice, it's showing up. It's still quite light, but I like this transition-wise for what it does. I'm going to go in with a refer number 14, and let's use this shade right here. And just to mix it up, we're gonna do a halo eye. Gonna put this on the inner and outer corner. I will say, of all of the quads, this one is probably the easiest one to get multiple looks with in a full complete look because you have three different depths of mattes. So that really allows you to blend and layer. So I do like that aspect. Though I like the mix of two mattes and two shimmers. I think that adds variety in a different way, but in terms of like getting a smoky-ish effect, in the look of that kind of dimension, this makes it really easy with the mattes. And I did have to build that up a little bit, but it still looks really nice. And you know how they didn't swatch that great? As I expected, they're applying really, really nice. So I'm gonna put this all over the lower lash line. Then I'm gonna stick with this brush and we're gonna see how this shade applies. This one can be patchy with similar shades that I've tried. A shade like this tends to be patchy. Oh, I like this. I feel like it's not pulling quite as deep as it looks in the pan, but it still is doing a good job. Ooh, I don't know. This is a really, really nice one as well. I still think I like the green a little better, but I might recommend the purple over everything. <gasps> I'm not sure. They're neck and neck. And then of course we're gonna finish with this shimmer all over the center. I like that. And this is quite pigmented and creamy. This is a nice shade. This is a good one too. This one is also right up my alley and I love the idea of having Viseart quality lavenders, my favorite shade of eyeshadows, in a little quad. I'm gonna put some of this also like right here. Liner and lashes and I'll be back to give you my final thoughts on everything. <gasps> I love the lavender one too. Like this one is also gorgeous. I don't know which one I prefer between these two. Okay, anyways, you know what was haunting me this whole video? It's the ugly look I did with Pastille. So for my final makeup look today that I'm like actually gonna be wearing out and whatnot, I'm just, I'm gonna create an attractive look with this. So <laughs> give me a moment.
Okay, I definitely feel as though I've redeemed this palette. Let's get into my final thoughts on all these little cuties. So every single one is really great quality. I didn't notice a single dud shade in any of these. Only things to know, particularly the matte formula is a little bit on the powdery side. You get a lot of fallout, but that doesn't affect the quality at all. It still is really a great quality, but that's not even a bad thing. It's just something to note for application. So if there's a color story that you think you're really loving and you're interested in, these don't break the bank all at once. If you wanted to try a Viseart formula, this is a great way to test it out for under $30. And then if you order from Beautylish, it's just great service, great shipping overall. And I'm not saying all of these are really unique color stories by any means. I think the least unique is probably Pesh and Pastille. And then within the Viseart line, if you have the Violet Eaton Dew, this is the one that had the closest match kind of sisters. Pistache, I don't know, Queen Pistache, I love it. It has colors that remind me of the ColourPop in the Limelight if you're looking for a bigger bang for your buck. But yeah, let me rank them from my least favorite to my most favorite. So my least favorite is Pastille, though I do think I've redeemed this palette with my second look because that first look was atrocious. I just couldn't live without showing you what this palette can do, but it's just not colors that I'm going to reach for. The neutrals are a little bit too warm for my preferences for every day, and I just, I don't love the color of the blue, but that's all personal preference. Third place is Pesh. It's really nice. It's just not original in my collection. Second place, believe it or not, is the lavender color. I love this. I think it's great. And I think because there's three different depths of mattes and it's a really great lilac palette, I highly encourage you to pick this up if you're interested. But just based on personal preference, I love, love, love what pistache is giving me, okay? I love that it's a cute little macaroon size and I think the green color is so pretty and mm, I'm just vibing with it. But all of them are great. It just depends on what you think you're gonna wear the most. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.